This video aims to give you a 10 minute long introduction on what buns are and a guide to their design, construction, maintenance and repair. The video covers industry standards for buns in the United Kingdom, but cannot be applied to all sites. Coma sites, for example, will require extra considerations which may not be covered by the contents of this video. Do I need a bund? As with a lot of environmental issues, there are very few legal requirements for bunding. The main exception being the Control of Pollution Oil Storage Regulations, which makes it a legal requirement in the UK to have adequate secondary containment on all external oil storage over 200 litres. However, it is highly recommended you have secondary containment on all hazardous liquid storage, as their uncontrolled release may cause environmental damage and create a hazardous working environment. If you have a pollution incident, you can be prosecuted, face an unlimited fine, and we'd be liable for all cleanup costs under the polluter pays principle. Bun design. Capacity. The first area of bun design we will look at is capacity. The industry standards are the 110% and 25% rules. These rules can cause some confusion, so we will explain them. The 110% rule is applicable where there is only one container stored inside the bund. In this situation, the calculation is simple. The bund needs to have the capacity of at least 110% of the primary containment volume. In this scenario, the tank has a capacity of 10,000 litres, which requires the bund to have a capacity of 11,000 litres. For bunds which house multiple containers, the calculation is slightly more complicated. The bund needs to have a capacity to hold either 110% of the largest primary container or 25% of the total volume of the primary containers, whichever is greater. If containers are linked, these are to be treated as a single container for the purposes of calculations. In this diagram, the five containers housed in the bund have a total storage of 60,000 litres, with the largest container holding 20,000 litres. Using the 110% rule, the bund would need a capacity of 22,000 litres. Using the 25% rule, the bund would need a capacity of 15,000 litres. Therefore, the higher volume of 22,000 litres is necessary. If we reduce the volume of the largest container to 10,000 litres, the total volume becomes 50,000 litres, with the largest container housing 10,000 litres. Using the 110% rule, the bund would need a capacity of 11,000 litres. Using the 25% rule, the bund would need a capacity of 12,500 litres. Therefore, the higher volume of 12,500 litres is necessary. Where multiple containers are being housed in the same bund, it is important to ensure the contents of the tanks are compatible with one another. The extra 10% capacity is to allow for additional liquids such as rainwater, firefighting media and overfilling of the containers. It also reduces the chance of liquid overtopping the sides of the bund, where the contained liquids are not static, causing a wave or tidal wave effect. Dimensions Once you have ascertained the minimum bund capacity, you can design the size and shape of your bund. Generally, a bund will be designed to have a small footprint so it doesn't take up too much space on site, but there are also other factors you will need to consider. As a minimum, you should have a 750mm separation distance between the primary container and the bund walls to allow for easy tank inspections. However, you may wish to increase this distance to protect against spigot flow, where a leak in the wall of a tank allows water to jet out of the tank and pass over the bund wall before it reaches the floor. You can also combat spigot flow by installing specialist infrastructure or by constructing taller bund walls. Taller bund walls will also increase the bund capacity and protect against the tidal wave effect. The tidal wave effect is where a catastrophic failure causes a mass release of liquids which can overtop the walls. However, constructing taller walls can cause access issues, limit ventilation and make firefighting difficult. For this reason, walls should be constructed no taller than 1.5 metres wherever possible. To help combat the tidal wave effect, you can install additional infrastructure to the bunds, such as deflector plates, which limit the amount of liquid which could overtop the bund in the event of a catastrophic failure. Bund construction. Once you have designed the size and shape of your bund, you can decide what material the bund should be constructed from. Bunds can be constructed from reinforced concrete or reinforced masonry. However, sites may have specific requirements related to the construction materials which will need to be adhered to. 
Consideration could be given to prefabricated bund walls, which are fixed to an impermeable base. These systems are typically cheaper and quicker to install than traditional bund walls, and can be dismantled and reassembled if necessary. In all instances, bunds must be designed and constructed to withstand the pressure exerted on them by a catastrophic tank failure. This can be up to six times the hydrostatic pressure. Following a new bund install, hydrostatic testing should be conducted to ensure the bund is watertight before the bund is put to use. Pipe and cable penetrations. Wherever possible, pipes and cables should be run over bund walls and not through the bund walls or floor. If penetrations are unavoidable, it is essential to ensure they have a watertight seal installed around them. The sealant material must be resistant to the product stored in the bund. On certain sites, seals will need to be designed in line with specific regulations or guidance. Bund linings. In order for a bund to be effective, its base and walls must be impermeable to the liquid it is designed to hold. Where a bund is not resistant to the material, the material can attack the walls and floor, leading to serious structural damage to the bund. Substances such as concrete and mortar can also be permeable, and if the contaminant can soak into the bund walls, it can leach out of the bund. In order to make a bund impermeable, a specialist lining can be applied to the bund walls and floor, which provides an effective seal, ensuring the bund is watertight. Different lining materials are available, but they should be designed to withstand attack from the material stored inside the bund. Rainwater. In order to prevent rainwater entering a bund and reducing its capacity, it is preferable to install a roof above the bunded area. However, this is often not an option. Where it is not possible to cover a bund, it is imperative an appropriate maintenance regime is in place. Bund maintenance. Bund maintenance is an extremely important factor which is often overlooked. As with all infrastructure, bunds will wear over time and without suitable maintenance can become unfit for purpose. Ensuring a suitable inspection and maintenance regime is in place will help you to extend the lifespan of your bunds, as necessary repairs can be conducted in a reasonable time frame, preventing the damage from becoming worse. Rainwater removal. Effective bunds will collect anything which falls inside them, not only the liquid they are designed to capture, but also unwanted material such as rainwater. If a bund is not maintained properly, the unwanted build-up could reduce the capacity of the bund and may cause it to fall below the capacity requirements. Rainwater and other debris should be removed regularly. Whenever removing substances from a bund, it is essential to test for contamination before they are disposed of. If they are contaminated, they will need to be disposed of in line with waste regulations or pumped to a suitable control measure such as an effluent tank or interceptor. Contamination levels can be very low and still require treating as hazardous waste. For oils, the threshold can be as little as 0.1%. For oil bunds, automatic bund dewatering units can be installed. The system discriminates between oil and water to within 5 parts per million and pumps out only the water, leaving the oil behind. Bund surveys. As well as conducting regular rainwater removal, periodic checks should be undertaken assessing the condition of the bund walls, floor, penetration seals and bund linings. If defects are recorded, they should be repaired as quickly as possible to prevent the problems from becoming worse. Even hairline cracks will provide a pathway for liquids to escape the bund and any structural issues can significantly weaken the strength of the bund walls, which could cause them to collapse in the event of a catastrophic failure. In addition to visual inspections, hydrostatic testing can be undertaken to test if a bund is watertight. The bund is filled with water and any loss of liquid is recorded by specialist equipment over a set period of time. Bund repair. If a bund develops problems, it is essential to get them fixed as soon as possible. Defective bunding can be as bad, if not worse, than no bunding at all, as it can mask leaks and give a false sense of security. Over a period of time, chemicals or oils leaching out of the bund can go unnoticed and lead to serious ground or groundwater contamination. If bunds have developed cracks, they will need to be repaired to ensure the bund is not only watertight, but retains the structural integrity to withstand a catastrophic failure. If the bund lining has failed, the bund will need relining or patch repairs to be undertaken. This video was designed to give a brief overview on the basics of bun design, construction, maintenance and repair. 
We hope you found it useful and if you require any assistance with your buns, please get in touch on 01656 741 799 or sales at gptenvironmental.co.uk.